All right, next. Uh, it may look like we've taken a step back, but we're actually moving forward. Uh, going to be taking the old scene, the first scene that we started working with, and we're just going to treat it uh, in a little bit different way. Uh, I made a couple little changes, nothing major. I changed the material color. Uh, I've added a skylight so that we get uh, some you know, some ambient light in there. Before it was just the the key light, and the shadows were totally black. So just save that out. We'll call that ENV ambient. All right. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, but with just the uh, key light. So we'll do a render of that. All right, that one's much faster. So we'll s now this is just the key light. So we'll save that out. We'll call it environment key. All right. Now uh, what we'll do is we're going to do the same thing, but with the teapot and not the ground. So we've got that set up. We'll render that. There's our uh, T key. And flip these again and render. Um, actually, one thing we're going to need to do here is we need the ground to be there so that it blocks the light correctly uh, on the teapot. So what we're going to do is instead just uh, we'll select it we'll go to its properties and we're going to make it invisible to camera. So it's still going to be there and cast shadows onto our teapot, but it's not going to render. Uh, that's really important. So let's let's do that. We'll render it. Okay, so here's the result of that. Let me save that out. Now, um, just I'll make sure I point it out now is that if our environment pass was supposed to cast a shadow with the key light uh, turned on onto the teapot, we would have had to do the same thing. We would have uh, made the environment invisible to the camera uh, and left it on for the teapot key pass. But in this case, we didn't need it. So now all we need is to get shadow passes. So uh, let's go in and for that we're going to need to create a matte material. So pick matte shadow and we have receive shadows and effect alpha. So the defaults here are what we want. So we're going to assign that to the, uh, the ground plane. And let's make sure that we make it visible to camera. And now what we're going to do is make the teapot uh, invisible to camera and let's do the key pass first so let's go ahead and render that okay so it appears to be all black if we check the alpha there's the shadow of our teapot so that one's good we'll call this T shadow All right, and uh, let's go ahead and we'll jump now into Fusion. And we'll bring in our control, bring in our passes. Okay, so let's spread this out a little bit, make some room. Start with whatever's going to be the furthest back. So we'll start with our environment. And we'll start, uh, after that, we'll put the teapot. And the shadow is going to go right in the middle. So let's start with a merge. And what we'll do is here's our uh, ambient pass for the environment. We'll put the key on. And uh, lighting passes are also going to be additive, just like speculars and reflections. Uh, all you do is you turn the alpha gain down, make it additive. So that's how you combine lighting passes together. Alright, so let's also go ahead and we'll combine these two together. And again, we'll turn the alpha gain down. 
All right, so there, those are additive. And now let's put the teapot over the background. And this is just a normal merge. All right, so now we need the shadow. Now, uh, if we look at the shadow, the, the teapot itself is not there, just the shadow of it. So it needs to go in between here. Now, one thing I see happen, which you should not do, is this. That's obviously not correct. Um, if we compare, see, the, this shadow is only blocking the key light. It's not blocking the ambient light. So what we need to do is actually connect this here so that all we're doing is we're blocking the key light so that this area is black and the ambient light is left the same. So now, uh, at least the shadow of the key is correct, but we, we missed the pass. We still got to go back. There's two shadow passes that you need in order to get this to turn out right. We need a shadow pass from the skylight as well. So go back in and uh, we'll flip this around. All the other settings can stay exactly how they were and we'll render that. Alright, so that, that render is finished now. If we check the alpha channel, we have just the shadow of the teapot from the skylight. So let's save that guy out. Uh, let's call that contact shadow. So now we'll go back in here, bring in our new pass. And remember, that needs to occlude only the ambient lighting. So there we've got this. Add the key, add the teapot, and you get the exact same result as if they had been rendered together. But now what's fun is you have control over the lighting of this scene. Uh, you can you know, change the light uh, light color, light intensity, whatever you want. So, you know, if you uh, use color corrector here, if you wanted to change the color of the key light on just the teapot, you have that control. You can do whatever you want with it now. You can make it brighter, whatever. So, uh, it's nice. It adds a lot of flexibility for lighting shots. And this is actually very much the way that uh, things are usually set up in the projects that I work on uh, professionally. So you know, I, I highly recommend this workflow. You, you don't need to separate things necessarily like we were before with uh, diffuse and lighting and uh, all those separate passes. I mean, this, I mean, this pass was rendered with the specular in it already. Uh, if I had a problem with the specular in the shot, I'd probably just go in and tweak it in Max and re-render it because it just starts to become a headache when you've got tons and tons of passes and you need to go back and make sure that you update the right ones and then you're saving out all sorts of frames on your hard drive and taking up space so uh, I find that this sort of workflow actually keeps the amount of passes to a minimum but still gives you a lot of control Okay, so I've jumped back over to Max and I've added a little bit to our environment here. Put a box in front of the teapot. Uh, just so we can show you how to set up matte materials so that we can get this to go back together properly and have the teapot, even though it's rendered separate, look like it's going behind uh, this box. So I've just given this the, the same material that is on the ground. Um, now really, the passes are going to be handled the exact same way as we did before, but what we're going to need to do is uh, when we render the teapot's passes, we're going to need to put a matte material on the environment so that it cuts out this part of the teapot. So what we'll do is I'll select my environment, put the matte material on there, and We'll just start by rendering the key pass just so you can see what it does here. So we'll render that out. And you know, I forgot to um, make this guy. Ooh. All right, my display's decided to freak out a little bit. Uh, need to make that visible to camera. 
Okay. So I'll render this again. And okay, as you can see, it's now cutting that. The box is cutting the teapot. And well, I have the shadows turned on there. Well, I have to turn that off too. But um, you can see it's cut the teapot out. So what we need to do is in our map material, we don't want shadows right now. Okay, so there you go. That's the new key pass. So let's see, that's our teapot key. Replace that. And uh, I won't bore you and make you watch the rest of these, but uh, I'll render them out and then we'll go back over to Fusion. All right, I finished rendering uh, the lighting passes for the environments, but I have not done the shadow passes yet because they're actually going to be done a little bit differently. So, uh, what we need to do is I'm going to turn the teapot back on. Uh, we're going to make him, uh, well, he's still invisible to camera, so we'll make sure invisible to camera. And we're going to put the matte material on the environment. We want shadows again. Now, uh, let me render this and I'll show you uh, what the problem is that we're going to have to fix. If we look at the shadow pass, we've got the shadow of the environment and the shadow of the teapot together, which we don't want. We want just the shadow of the teapot. Uh, now, the way to fix that is to change the properties of the environment so that the environment does not cast shadows but it still receives shadows so we're going to turn this off and we'll render again we look at the alpha and there we go now we have uh, the correct shadow pass for the key light so we'll just save that out uh, that was the T shadow and just do the exact same setup for the skylight which again I won't make you watch all right, that has finished, and here is the shadow of just the teapot on the environment uh, from the skylight. So update that pass, jump back into Fusion, and if we just reload all these, there you go. Everything comes in the way it should be. All right, uh, one thing I would like to point out with this is. Um, we've got these shadow passes that we're putting on that we're not doing anything to. Let's say this is uh, the look we want for our final render. We, we've decided to split it up into passes and we've rendered these passes. Uh, we're not doing anything to them. We're just combining uh, everything back together again so that it comes out looking like, you know, the, well, not that one, but uh, the render straight out of Max. So, if we're not doing anything with these in the comp, why render them? You know, we could probably create this just by taking the teapot and making it invisible to camera, and then we only have one pass, and the same goes for this. If the teapot was invisible to camera, then we could render the key pass of the environment and get this. And it's true that if we did that, this would go back together exactly right. There'd be no problem. Um, the reason why you might not want to do that is sometimes when your environments and your characters and scenes and everything are getting really complex, the render times start to become a problem. Now it seems like if you had rendered these together, you're saving time because otherwise you'd have to render twice. But that may not be the case. Um, shadow passes just by themselves sometimes or, or will often really render faster than if you had done an entire uh, an entire ambient pass again of the environment you know uh, so that's going to actually slow you down even more so it's even though you've got more passes to deal with it's often better because these passes usually render faster and then uh, the environment is completely isolated and the character is completely isolated. So you, you don't have to, like if, uh, let's say the animation of this teapot changed after I'd rendered everything. You know, I could just do these teapot passes again 
and the shadow passes which are quick um, instead of re-rendering all the environments passes over again as well so you know just keep that in mind uh, it tends to be better to split these out and keep them separate even though it does create a little bit of extra work in the comp for you okay I've jumped back over to Max and I want to just show you one more thing which you should be careful of um, I've deleted the box I've turned the lights and everything back on made everything visible again uh, let's let me just make sure okay cast shadows um, one thing you shouldn't do if you can avoid it and often you can is to render your environment passes like this uh, let me just go ahead and render that and show you what I mean let me uh, I want those off okay uh, this is the sort of thing you're gonna want to try to avoid doing uh, what I've done here is I put the matte material on the teapot while rendering my environment pass and if we look at the alpha it's cut that hole out now you you may think it's it's not a problem because you're just gonna put the teapot back on top of this so let me just save this out okay and I'll load that in all right I'm just gonna disconnect this this is our uh, teapot uh, teapot passes here oh, shoot I need to re-render those hold on a second all right excuse me I do uh, jump back there and fix one of my mistakes uh, so I've, I've rendered another beauty pass which is just the teapot now so we're just going to deal with these two for a second so what we'll do is I'm going to merge this together and take a look at what happened alright see we're getting this halo around the edge now the reason that that's happening is because uh, if we look at the alpha channel remember just like before we've got these values that are gray in the alpha which means they're partially transparent and what we're seeing is through to the background color which is black so when we put this on top that's what we're seeing we're seeing the black we're seeing straight through to the background uh, now just to make sure that that's really clear um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the background color so to do that I'm going to put rearrange this stuff here okay so now we've got background color here is our um, background pass and our teapot pass now let's say I change the color of the background if we zoom in now you can see we're getting different colors on the edge that's just because we're seeing through to the background now so if you can avoid it do do try and avoid that alright so what do you do if you're stuck in a situation where you don't have time to go back fix your passes or uh, that they're just you know you need to render your passes this way how do you fix this problem well it is possible it gets a little ugly and that's why it's really better if if you can to fix it uh, in your 3D package but it is possible to fix and here's how you do it um, alright we gotta figure out what the problem is exactly and it becomes real obvious if we look at the alpha channel of these two passes being combined alright because they were cut out from each other uh, when you merge them together you get these values in between where you know this this uh, but what does uh, pre-multiplying do basically let's pretend the teapot wasn't in in here and we had just this blue background over everything what happens is the alpha channel 
is this white color here, black here. Uh, just like if you were to multiply this on top of an all blue background, this is the result you would expect to get. You get black where the black is, and where white is, it does nothing. And the values in between, it just kind of makes this little gradient towards black. Now, uh, that's exactly what pre-multiplying is doing to the RGB channels. It's darkening them. And then as the last step, what it does is it saves out the alpha channel. It, like, kinda, it just punches the hole right through the RGB, creating the alpha. So that's pre-multiplying. But what we need to do is restore this to its unpremultiplied state. Uh, and in order to do that, we're going to use an, the Boolean again. We'll connect it up. And this time what we're going to do is instead of multiplying, we need to do the opposite. So we're going to divide this time. So we'll set the operation to divide. And we're not dividing by the RGB, we're dividing by the alpha. So we'll switch this to alpha for each of the RGB channels. And uh, for, for the alpha, we're going to do nothing for right now. Okay, so look what happened. If we go back, all those areas that were uh, in between values that weren't blue, they were starting to go towards the black, have been restored to their original blue color. Uh, we get this ugly jagged edge, but um, that's actually not a problem. So I'll show you what happens. Like I'm going to bring a mat control down here uh, just because it has this option right here, post multiply. So this is the straight alpha version. And then if we turn on post multiply, we get the original image back. So here's the original image. Here it is after we've divided it and multiplied it again, giving us the exact same result. So, all right, perfect, we're on the right track. We've restored these edges, so at least now the right color is showing up there. And what we need to do is actually get this into our alpha. All right, so here we're dividing stuff, so we can't connect it there. What we need to do is bring another Boolean in. And in this case, we'll connect uh, this pass or this uh, node into our channel boolean and f we're going to copy but the RGB we don't want to change at all so that needs to go to do nothing and the alpha is going to be the foreground alpha so if we look at the alpha channel now okay we've we've put this guy's alpha into this pass now so the RGB has our, our uh, unpremultiplied edges, but the alpha channel has the combination of these two. See how complicated this gets? You'd rather avoid this. Um, and now, when we put this over, we get this white back here. And that's what happens in Digital Fusion when you, basically when you divide by zero. Wherever it was black and we divided it, uh, it just becomes white. So we need to get rid of that, and to do that, we just um, we just bring this guy in the mat control, and post multiply, and that's giving us our background showing through. So and here we still have the, our nice edges, our unpremultiplied edges with the white, which doesn't matter because we're covering it up. And there we go. We've gotten rid of the problem. Everything merges in perfectly, and uh, this is actually identical to the results that you would get if you had rendered this together. So we solved the problem, and look what an ugly mess it is, and it's fairly complicated, and you need to know what you're doing here. So uh, it's really best, if you can help it, to not have to go through this and just set up your passes out of max correctly to begin with.